On the Go.fm, I'm Jason Norris. This episode is about noise. Sometimes noise is audible. Sometimes noise is silent. Seriously, noise can be a lot of different things. And sometimes it's not a technical problem at all. But no matter how loud or quiet, noise interferes with communication. And because podcasting is an act of communication, noise is a problem podcasters need to be aware of. That's coming up on this episode of OnTheGo.fm. This episode, by the way, is made possible through audio editing. Not only have I edited this show, I'm offering editing services to you. When it comes to podcast editing, some people love it and others loathe it. Well, I love editing. If you don't like it or don't have time to edit, contact me at onthego.fm. Just click contact and send me a message and uh, we'll talk about the kinds of editing services you need for your show. Podcasting is an act of verbal communication. And when you get right down to it, communication is essentially this. Someone says something to someone else. That someone else listens and replies. There have been several models and diagrams of communication throughout the years, but that's essentially what it is. You speak, the listener listens, the listener speaks, and you listen. Of course, if it were really that simple, then we would never have any conflicts and we'd all get along. But since that's not the case, there is something else in the communication process. That something else is noise. Noise is something that interferes with communication. Noise can happen on your side as the speaker or podcaster, or it can happen on the listener's side or it can happen somewhere in between. I'm going to talk about four types of noise that can get between you and your listener, and then I'll throw in a bonus metaphor for noise near the end. This information comes from Pearson. It's a textbook on interpersonal communication, and there's a sample chapter with foundations for communication that I'll link to in the notes for this episode. It's a a PDF, and you can download it and read it, and I really believe it's a good resource, even if you don't buy the whole book. There are four types of noise. Physical, physiological, psychological, and semantic. The first type of noise is physical noise, and this is interference that is external to both the speaker and the listener. It hampers the physical transmission of the signal or the message. Some examples include a loud party at the neighbor's while you're trying to record, uh, or loud kids who don't want to take their nap or go to sleep on time, uh, whether you're trying to record or listen, and uh, also the hum of your computer or the air conditioner or a fan in the background or the heater. Those are examples of physical noise. The second type of noise is physiological noise, and this is created by barriers within the sender or the receiver. Some examples include, uh, on the podcaster side, articulation problems, or mumbling, or talking too fast, or talking too slow, or forgetting to pause, or forgetting to breathe. On the listener's side, hearing problems, and uh, maybe they can't hear those high tones as clearly as they used to, or sometimes the low tones are the problem. So the first two are physical and physiological. The physical is on the outside, external, and the physiological is more internal. Now we move on to silent noise. That is, it's silent on the outside. Uh, Psychological noise is mental interference in either the speaker or the listener. Now, this one is challenging. One example would be wandering thoughts. 
Now, primarily, this is a listener problem. Uh, If you're teaching some concept in your podcast, wondering thoughts is an obstacle for your listener. It's noise to them. They may be distracted and may have difficulty keeping up with you. Sometimes as podcasters, we cause listeners thoughts to wonder, especially if we talk too fast or too slow or fail to pause. But sometimes, wondering thoughts can actually be a podcaster problem, too. Have you ever started talking about one point, only to find yourself way off track talking about something completely unrelated? Usually, it takes a lot of concentration and maybe some planning to make sure you stay on the same road rather than going down rabbit trails. Another example of psychological noise, preconceived ideas. In other words, you think you already know something, and that noise interferes with a listener's willingness to hear some new perspective. Other examples of psychological noise include biases, prejudices, and closed-mindedness. And when there is a psychological noise like this, you have to work much harder than usual to make your communication clearer. Of course, if you don't care to persuade someone to see things your way, then sarcasm is the easy way. It's noise to your listener, and they won't pay attention to your message. Or it will rile them up so they can come back at you with a response that you'll consider noise too. And then true communication will stop. There is something that can help, though, if you actually want to communicate and persuade someone to listen to you. If your listener hears you explain his or her perspective clearly, not in a snarky way, not in a condescending way, but in a way that makes the listener realize you actually do understand his or her viewpoint, then that listener will be much more willing to listen to you explain your viewpoint, even though it's different. That's not a 100% guarantee, but it can work. And if you have a communication issue like that or a topic that's coming up, give it a try. So again, that is silent noise on the outside. It's it's psychological noise, and it's a mental block that happens either from the speaker's point of view or the listener's point of view. Now, the fourth kind of noise is semantic noise, and this is interference created when the speaker and listener, well, they have different meaning systems. Maybe when I use a term, you have a slightly different meaning in mind, which can cause confusion. Jargon is a great linguistic shortcut if everyone listening agrees and understands the terminology. But if there's disagreement or differences in understanding those meanings, then jargon becomes noise. This is especially noisy to people outside your particular job or your field. And another kind of semantic noise is when your words and sentences are ambiguous or too abstract. For some people, and that includes me, it seems almost impossible to speak concretely. And it's quite possible, even in this episode, that I've only thought I was being specific and clear in all of this. If I'm too abstract, then you might misunderstand me. And then my own semantic noise has interfered with our communication. So those are the four types of noise. Physical, physiological, psychological, and semantic. And I hope I've explained those terms clearly. And that noise from my side of the podcast hasn't interfered with your understanding of those things. Oh yeah, I mentioned a bonus. There's a technical term that can be used metaphorically to illustrate another aspect of how noise interferes with communication. Signal-to-noise ratio. Used as a metaphor, 
The signal, part of signal-to-noise ratio, refers to information you'd find useful. The noise part of signal-to-noise ratio refers to information that is useless to you. Examples include your news or Twitter feed. If you find yourself scrolling through a lot of posts that are not useful to you, that's noise. Too much of that kind of noise is often called information overload. And the same could be said when you're listening to a podcast and you're hoping to hear something specific, but maybe the host goes off on uh, tangents or maybe the host brings in a lot of other information in there that you weren't expecting and you're having to wait and wait and wait to get to the point that you downloaded the podcast in the first place to listen to. So that's noise. However, if you only followed a few people and a few organizations that you find useful, their posts are not as noisy. And the same with a podcast that, you know, gets right to the point, gets to the point that you want to listen to, then you might not consider that noisy either. But consider this, what's noise to you might actually be interesting and useful to someone else. And the things that you love to read and listen to might actually be nothing but noise to your neighbor. Bottom line, all communication contains noise. You can't get rid of the noise for every person who listens to you. But you can work to reduce the noise. How? For one thing, you can make your language more precise, communicating as clearly as possible with the words that say what you mean and that you know will be understood clearly by your listeners. Another way is practice. Practice speaking. Practice articulating. Practice using your recording and editing tools. And another way is to invite feedback. Sometimes listeners take a while before they decide to respond. So invite feedback often. Once you start hearing feedback from your listeners, then you can begin to tweak your message so that it becomes more clear and understandable for those who listen to your podcast. And by the way, feedback is something I would love to hear from you. What noise is interfering with our communication? Or if my messages have been clear, what are you enjoying and learning from me? Or has any of this sparked an idea you would like to share or a question you would like to ask? Whatever it is, I would like to hear your feedback. Send your email to feedback at onthego.fm. That's feedback at onthego.fm. Or just click contact at our website for other ways to respond.